Alright, okay, 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 okay. We're gonna get the crit damage here for sure. Look, look. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna sacrifice all of this. It's gonna go to crit damage, all of it. What the f Hey goats, this video is all about saving resin and making sure that we don't waste our precious materials in game. Make sure that you listen and watch closely as these steps will help you really get the most out of your materials, especially artifacts. So we're going to discuss the best domains to farm and since this is an efficiency and practicality guide, let's not waste any of your time, let's get right into it. Thanks for dropping by everyone, this is Godric and I've been playing Genshin Impact since its launch and similar to other gacha games, I've observed a lot about it especially in the saving of materials department. I've placed timestamps in the description so feel free to skip ahead to the part that you need. But first, I want to point this out. Saving does not necessarily mean you're spending efficiently. In other words, just because you're not using your mora, your crowns, your resin especially, does not mean that you're saving them. This sort of mechanic about materials and not leveling characters up is not exclusive to Genshin. A lot of other games has this, so how do we actually spend efficiently? First, I want to put these rules out for you to follow. Choose your main. Choose your main DPS, your favorite character, and focus on them. This will be our starting point. Once you've established that, of course, we level them up. Usually, we'll level up characters up to 80 over 90, meaning we ascend them all the way. And we don't level up all the way to 90 because it's inefficient. Especially for regular attack scaling characters, the amount of attack that we get from level 80 to 90 has a lower margin than that of HP or defense. To add to that, some support characters will do with only 60 over 70 ascension, as the level 60 ascension is what unlocks the second passive talent. But I'd also like to advise you to go for at least 70 over 80 ascension, as this is where you'll get one free standard fate, or at least the third one for that character. Now that we've leveled up our favorite character, along the way, we also need to level up their talents. This is something that some players forget, including myself, wondering why their damage or buffs have low output. And then of course, aside from those two, we build our characters with artifacts, and I've said this before and I'll say it again, farm artifacts last. You'll probably hear me say this again later, for when we discuss about artifacts. Okay, now that we've established these three points for our characters, we also need to spend for weapon, levels, and ascension. So let's add these two to our list. Now, we have these items to consider. Character levels, character ascension, talent levels, weapon levels, weapon ascension, and lastly, we will have to put this aside for a while, artifacts. So you do this for your main DPS, and then the next, probably your sub DPS, and then your support characters. So it, meets, it may sound like a lot of work, but for older players like me, it's gonna be just like breezing through it. So those are the basics, now let's get to how we can efficiently save our resources. We know that raw XP bucks can be obtained from the blue ley lines, so we get 6 to 7 of the 5k XP and 4 to 5 of the 20k XP. Meanwhile, we get 60k mora from the yellow ley lines. And as you can see, it's too little, too few, and you can barely max your character with those numbers. Anyhow, my advice for this is for you to instead go to your Serenity pot and purchase the Mora and XP box from Tubby. And don't miss out on the times 2 drop events. And for this recording, in the current patch 3.3, there will be another times 2 drop event. But that's not saying that you shouldn't farm them from the ley lines. What I'm saying is, if you're still short, only claim them from the ley lines if you no longer need your resin for something else, like character or weapon ascension mats or talent mats. In addition, we also have our bounties and requests under the region reputation NPC. Starting from Mondstadt, you'll be introduced to one. Once I completed or maxed out my reputation level for each region, I stopped doing this and later I realized how big of a mistake that was. So, because it's not just the reputation XP we're getting, you know, but also the Mora rewards. Make sure that you don't miss this because they give out a total of 150k Mora per week. Bonus tip here, but I'm guessing you'll follow through it. Once you reach Inazuma, it's best to do the bounties there or in Sumeru because the Liwei and Mondstadt bounties take a lot longer because of this pre-investigation gimmick. Now for mob drops, we need certain mob drops for weapons or talents, and in case you forgot, 
we can track or navigate to an opponent from our adventurer's handbook. And if they're all gone, you'll notice them having a respawn time. One thing you can do about this is to farm them in co-op, or this is something that you can do every day. Open up the ley lines we just mentioned. Now, don't go telling me that I said not to do that. In case you don't know, you can trigger the ley lines, kill the mobs, and get their drops. But you can leave the resin flower behind and not claim the XP books or mora. This way, you can get the mob drops and even cross out your weekly battle pass quests. Now, I can still see some players farming specific bosses only for the specific elemental stones, so it's these ascension mats. I think that that can only apply if you're a new player or on the lower AR. But if this is already available to you, and in case you don't know, we can convert these stones in the crafting table, here in the convert tab. The same goes for the weekly boss mats. And only if you have no converting material, this Dust of Azoth, you can try to get some from the shop even if 2P players have access to this. Only if you really can't should you do that boss hunting thing. And if you're gonna do that, make sure that the boss you're hunting at least would give you a useful boss mat. For example, I no longer need the Anemo Hypostasis drop, but I still have my Sayu here underleveled. You can, as a matter of fact, get Anemo gems from Magu Kenki, meanwhile getting the level up mat from it thereby not wasting your resin. And if not now, maybe in the future when you actually want to ascend that character. Our third section is events. We only used to have one or two events per patch or per phase, especially in the earlier patches of Genshin. Now we get double including story quests, major events where we get free limited weapons and so on. I want you guys to be aware of these events because more often than not, these events give out, aside from Mora, XP books and crystals, we have talent books and weapon ascension materials. These give us generous amount, of course, reducing our resin consumption, which you can use elsewhere. I mentioned about awareness of these events, so you can follow Genshin Impact social media channels, or if not, they post it here in the news and events section in-game. Speaking of which, we have a daily login or check-in at their official Hoyoverse or Hoyolab app or website. Monthly, we can get like 60 gems in total, so you just have to log in every day. Okay, now that we've covered those basic parts, let's go to the artifacts. But before that, if you're still here and so far you found this video to be helpful, please consider liking and subscribing if you haven't yet. You know, it's free and it would really mean a lot. And you should know that I really appreciate all of the interactions with my viewers, especially with my Discord goats. Alright, so this is a fact. Since my early days playing Genshin Impact, my signature here, never ending artifact farming has been my signature ever since. And that there is a mistake. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you now because it just is. I mean, I've been aware about artifacts of course early on and even before I reached AR45 that is. AR45 as you know is a pivotal rank because it's when we are able to unlock the 5 star artifact from domains. You'll often hear about this from other players to only farm artifacts once you've reached AR45. Yeah, because because of the reason I just said. And another fact, which is very important because especially in this new major patch in 3.0, is the addition of all the artifacts up to patch 1.2 in the artifact strong box, or as what we call the artifact scam box. <laughs> in case you don't know, those artifacts are the following. Thundering Fury and Thunder Soother, Maiden Beloved and Viridescent Vendor, Crimson Witch of Flames and Lava Walker, Archaic Petra and Retracing Bolide, and the Heart of Death and Blizzard Strayer. Before that, we only had the Gladiator's Finale, Wanderer's Troop, Bloodstained Chivalry, and the Noblesse Obliged Pieces. Now, I must say that listing specific domains that you should farm does not mean it's efficient in and of itself, because resin efficiency, as a matter of fact, is subjective. Yes, but don't go in the comments saying this is clickbait. Um, what I'm saying here is none of us have the same characters, weapons, we don't have the similar builds or levels and especially character building progress. This is the same reason why in our original resin efficiency guide, I provided domains you can farm if you have so and so character. My approach here would still be similar but given the fact that we have new domains more inclined to be used by and for dendro teams, we will focus more on those but still touching pre-existing artifact domains. Because like I said, resin efficiency may turn out to be subjective. Also, please don't go yet after the artifact domains list because I have more tips after that. 
Meta-wise, the Spiral Abyss forces us, the players, to use Dendro, or at least in the current patches. That's why of course, the first on our list is the Gilded Dreams and Deepwood Memories domain. Gilded is intended for direct DPS characters, focused on the raw elemental damage buff, attack, and elemental mastery. Notable for a variety of elemental reaction focused characters, I'd also like to point out that this is not focused or specific for Dendro reactions. Players just are, you know, inclined to use it on Dendro teams because it just procs a lot of reactions, especially in Bloom and Hyper Bloom teams. The Deepwood is for Dendro characters, of course, or a Dendro support character, albeit losing out the two-piece Dendro damage effect. Since it reduces Dendro resistance, of course, it should be used within Dendro teams. The next and can be related to the first domain is the Desert Pavilion Chronicle and Flower of Paradise Lost. Similar to Gilded and Deepwood domain, this is nice if you're going after the Flower of Paradise Lost, but more so if you're building the Wanderer for the Desert Pavilion. By the way, that 4-piece set can also work with Zhao, although of course with a niche that works best with Wanderer, the charge attacking. Now, if you're currently building Dendro Reaction focus teams, characters, these domains are your go-to. Right now, I'm farming the Gilded and Deepwood because I'm still building my Nahida and also advanced farming for my uh, Haytham. The good thing about these domains is that you can still use the 2-piece Gilded and 2-piece Paradise Lost if you have characters that need their plus 80 EM effects. And let's go to probably the best artifact domain in the game, the Emblem of Severed Fate and Shimanawa's Reminiscence domain. In the grand scheme of things, the Emblem Artifact, the 4-piece set, gives a great effect especially for burst DPS units, like Raiden, Shengchu, Shangling, Kaya, to name a few. You can equip these pieces to them, and when you passively get either 2-piece or 4-piece of the Shimanawas, its plus 18% attack can be used as a generic 2-piece set for your DPS units, like Zhao, Yai, Miko, Ningguang, or you know, generally this and another elemental damage bonus 2-piece set. This is also how I managed to get the 4-piece Shemenawas for my Hu Tao by passively getting them, trying to farm for my Raiden's Emblem pieces. And some of my other Emblem pieces for my other burst DPS like Rosaria and Yelon. Now, we're going to dive deep into the more subjective domains but first, let's go back and talk about the crafting table, the artifact scam box, I mean strong box, specifically. By the way, we all know that bosses would only drop either gladiators or wanderer pieces. That being said, I would advise against converting your pieces to them because by chance, it is possible to get some of them from the bosses. You can, and like I always say, that will be the player's decision. For example, your main is Ganyu or Tenari and they can best use the wanderer's troop 4 piece. Then if you really have no luck getting decent pieces from the bosses and you have no intention or you're done with your supports, you know, maybe you're just min-maxing, then by all means, convert them to the Wanderer's Troop in the strong box. Okay, I guess you already know where I'm going for here. Once you get your pieces on the above domains, you can go to the strong box and convert your trash pieces to the artifact of your choice. We now have a long list and you should focus on the rules that we said earlier. First focus on your main DPS, sub DPS, and then supports or flex units. I personally go and convert here to get Noblesse. This set is generally useful especially for supports or burst supports. The attack buff is very useful. Plus the fact that it's domain with a bloodstained. The bloodstained artifact is now sort of power crept by the pale flame set. Although 2 piece bloodstained and 2 piece pale flame is a combo that you can use. The same goes with viridescent. This set is still very much essential since it can reduce the resistance of whichever element is swirled. And similar to the Bloodstained set, the Maiden Beloved set is pretty much useless now because we get more out of the Ocean Hued Glam set. Now, let's go back to the case-by-case -case basis artifact domains, those that you can still format and like I said, would be subjective per account if they'd be efficient for you. The first one would be the Tenacity of the Melilith and Pale Flame domain. This one's at the bottom of the list because it's very situational. I actually need the tenacity pieces but I don't use nor I don't have any physical damage DPS so I'm currently not farming this domain. The tenacity is very much useful for supports or DPS supports such as Zhongli, Kokomi, Kuki, or Layla. It can even be used as a niche set for Fischl and Mona. The thing is, if you have 2 supports or 3, chances are you'll have one of them with the 4 piece Noblesse, one can be a very decent holder, and another one probably with Emblem. But sometimes, when we try to get the most damage for our main DPS, as many buffs as we can, the tenacity can actually deliver. 
So farm here if you need that extra juice, but best if you're still building or maybe min-maxing your physical DPS or rather save potentially Copium Pale Flame pieces as an off piece. But then again, better if you have Eula, Razor, or even physical build Keqing and or Jinyang. Next we have the Archaic Petra and Retracing Bolide. The retracing has its niche fairly usable for Noel or Jinyan or any normal attacking character but you have to be shielded for the passive. Farm here if you need that or the Archaic which I personally use for my Albedo and Ningguang. And then of course, we have the Husk of Opulent Dreams and Ocean Hued Glam set. This is another situational domain but one that requires a 4 piece of both so more often than not, you'll be spending quite some time here too. I'll also have to point out that because of most likely your goal here anyway is to get defense for husk pieces and HP or attack for the clan pieces, you may find this domain easier to farm because of course RNG, the game loves to give us defense and HP. <laughs> anyway, so the husk set of course is best for Ito, Albedo, or a DPS Noel, even viable for Yunjin. And the clan set of course for Kokomi, Barbara, or Chichi. And then for both the Thundering Fury equal to the Crimson Witch as Thunder Soother is to Lava Walker. In my opinion, if you're focusing on either Thundering Fury or Crimson Witch and you don't need the newer artifact sets not in the strong box, it may be better to farm them directly because 3 pieces of your other trash artifacts may just be wasted further if directly converted from the strong box. This way, you can still use the 4 piece sets of Thunder Soother and Lava Walker of course with their own niche with Electro and Pyro DPS units in Mono Electro and Mono Pyro teams respectively. So we have Keqing, Fischl, Beidou, even Yai Miko or Sino, and for Pyro, Klee for her very strong and consistent Pyro application. Finally, the Heart of Death and Blizzard Strayer. This is a very good domain if you're building Hydro and Cryo DPS units. Both of them have strong effects, especially the Blizzard Strayer. I used to farm this a lot before, back when I was still building my Ayaka, and that's how I came up with my Heart of Death pieces, which are then now on Ayato and Child. You can also use their 2 piece sets for generic DPS builds. Example, just pair either 2 piece Heart of Death or the Blizzard Strayer with a 2 piece plus 18% attack pieces, or even 2 piece Noblesse or 2 piece Emblem sets. This next section is just a reminder that you might be forgetting to use your Parametric Transformer. This is in addition to our Ley Lines talent and weapon mats as this gives us extra mats that are even more useful and may come in handy if you know you're you're short of one or two pieces of them now let's recap and give out some bonus tips but before that please comment down below which one you think was the best tip or better yet if you think that they may have missed anything that you know you think would help out other players write them down so they'd also see them okay now let's go down our list so for us to save our resin, the best way is to know that the game is full of RNG, and that's a fact. And since we have different characters, different teams, the domains we farm would differ from each other. Make sure that your characters are ascended up to 60 or 70 for that extra standard fate. Level up your talents, farm talent mats first, ascend and level up your weapons, max them. And when crafting talent and weapon ascension mats, Take advantage of the character passives that give extra mats such as Shengchu, Yai Miko and Layla, Mona, Albedo and Ayaka, and of course Sucrose and Dori. Next, you can open and kill the Leyline mobs without claiming or spending the Leyline drops. And then of course, farm artifacts last and make sure that you can use both artifacts in that domain and if not, consider them as off-piece or if they're completely trash, of course, use them in the strong box. You wouldn't want to waste artifact fodders and you can actually farm 1 star artifact pieces across the map and they reset after 1 day from the last time that you took them. That's all for this video, I hope this was helpful. This has been Godric and I'll see you on the next one.